So Michael was a miracle child. He was precocious, uh, talkative, he talked early, and then literally within a matter of a couple of weeks, we lost all language. He stopped saying everything except Baba and Wawa. I did not hear Mommy for almost two years. It was frightening, and I didn't know what to do. I, I have a social work background, so I had an inkling as to what was going on, but denial is a great place to be. Colby's my second son, so I was an experienced mom when he was born. In that first year, 10 months to a year, everything was fine. And then somewhere between that one year and that 15 month mark, things changed. And it took me actually a little while to recognize it because there's always so many reasons why you can stay in denial, but it just became more and more clear that he was not only not gaining skills, he was losing skills. Shortly after I received the devastating realization that my son had autism, I met Susan Sachs. We were in separate paths at first. We each had learned about this miraculous therapy called ABA, Applied Behavior Analysis Therapy. And we both knew that that was the key to helping our kids, but there was nowhere to to find it here in the state of South Carolina. Lisa ended up reaching out to a provider in California. I reached out to someone in New York, and we were able to begin ABA programs. As we were developing ideas for how to help our boys, we realized they needed some interaction. And there was nowhere for those children with autism to engage with children who did not have autism, to practice all those skills that they were missing. And so we came together with some parents and we formed a nonprofit, Project Hope Foundation. Our first mission statement that went with the word hope was help our potential emerge. Because that is what we wanted to do with our kids, give them the opportunity, the structures, the supports, the therapy they needed to be the best that they could be. So when we started in 1997, we had a small preschool. It was an inclusion-based preschool, and it was meant to be a complement to the therapy that our, our boys were getting. So we had 18 children, three little classrooms. That continued to grow as we scaled up and added classes. And so as soon as there was a funding source open in 2007, we started a therapy program. Our growth has been in several directions. It has been in the types of programs that we provide, it has been in the ages that we serve, but it has also been in the locations that we provide those programs. So Project Hope Foundation scope today is astounding. We have eight campuses, one in Anderson, we have two in Greenville, one in Greenwood, one in Landrum, one in Pendleton, in Spartanburg, and in Woodruff. So we're all over. Our first son, around his second birthday, we noticed that he was different than the rest of the kids at his birthday party. <laughs> My wife Charlie and I had our daughter in 2003 and early on we knew there were some things but it was attributed to her being a big baby. Big babies walk late, big babies do this, do that. But as time went by it was evident that it was more than just some delays because of her size. Um, and that's the first time we had heard the word autism. When we got the final test results back, the doctor basically said that he was never going to go to school. He wouldn't be able to, he was going to be nonverbal. I'm probably not going to get to teach her how to drive a car. I'm probably not going to um, get to go watch her play basketball. And so all of that was just heavy and sad and disorienting. When we first heard of Hope, we started to see that their desire to care for children and their families was a very, very strong desire. They had very clear strategies on how to go care for kids and families. And about a year later, the progress that they had made with him was incredible. He was talking, he knew his ABCs, like he just needed to get it out. He needed somebody to help him, you know, verbalize everything that he actually knew. The burden of autism will never go away for us, but the burden got lighter. We had other people carrying it for us and with us. Hope has been our saving grace, for sure. Knowing that one in 54 children have autism makes it a passion for me to explain how important what Hope does is for the community. A donation to Project Hope Now 
opens up another spot for another child. And the sooner that you can get them in there and get the therapies, the higher success rate that they have of being a productive member of society. If Project Hope did not exist, I don't even know where my boys would be. They've totally changed our lives, the whole family's lives, the extended family's lives. I'm so forever grateful for Hope and for uh, Lisa and Susan and all the donors. <laughs> Listen, some of those guys and girls that give their time and money, I couldn't have done it without their support. I could never repay them for what they've done, and I am forever grateful. Today, Project Hope Foundation has four core programs, therapy, education, adult services, and what we call community engagement. In our therapy program, we are serving over 220 kids every day, providing intensive one-on-one -on -one applied behavior analysis. Our school program serves about 100 kids in combination with our own private school and with our collaborations with 10 private and public schools throughout the upstate and in the Lakelands. And our adult program, which is one of our most growing programs, is currently serving 20. Now that we've had the therapy with the boys, they can go out in public and like go out to family functions and be able to sit there and eat their meal and play with the other kids, all because we've had this intensive therapy that has helped us so much. We have added adult services and we're moving forward with it, but what we are missing is residential services for this population. We want a housing plan. We want a place to know that our adults will be able to live safely, happily, and independently as possible with meaningful work and with relationships that can sustain them when we're no longer here to help. One of our biggest challenges is absolutely funding. In order to keep our employees, in order to serve our kids, we have to have sustainable funding, and we don't have that. We have people who are calling us every day waiting for services, begging for services. Project Hope Foundation needs your help. Without you, we cannot change the lives of the children that we serve. We need you to help to raise the funds that we need to cover these programs, to cover the shortfall that we experience every single day that our doors are open. The further we spread out, the more people we can help, the more people we can touch. In autism, it doesn't discriminate. It affects anybody, anywhere. There's so many ways to support us. We always need money, and you can donate online, and every bit counts. We also have events that you can participate in, our 5K, our Evening of Hope Gala. We have an adult t-shirt business. We'd love to get your business so that you get your shirts printed by our adults. Anybody can help. The amount is irrelevant as long as your heart's in the right place. If I could say anything to the people that work at Project Hope, I would say what you do is so much more important than just a job. You change the future. You change families. You keep families intact. You saved us. So don't ever underestimate the power of what you do because it is life-altering and it is life-changing. In a six-month time, he's a different child. He's happier, he engages. The biggest thing for me with Kaylin is communication. It's just amazing to me when your child started out not talking or not able to tell you anything, he's able to express how he feels. And those are the things that, you know, I attribute to him being at hope. We have shared in so many what we, we call extraordinary, ordinary moments because that's what autism takes from you, is it's ordinary moments that you would never notice if it weren't for autism. And then you celebrate them because it took so much work to get that moment. So those are moments like when a child, you call his name and he looks up at you for the first time. When you've got someone who said, I could walk across the parking lot with my teenager and I did not have to hold his hand because I was no longer afraid that he was gonna bolt away. So those moments that sneak in where you realize uh, something that we've worked so hard to do, my child now can do and does on his or her own. Those ordinary, extraordinary moments are really what we, what we live for. It is humbling to know that 
What we do every day is going to make a difference. It's going to give a child a chance to live the life they were meant to live. Thank goodness that Project Hope is there to help smooth out some of the bumps for them because there is a tremendous amount of bumps in the road for these families with autism. Autism is a lonely, lonely diagnosis. And so with Project Hope, I know that I can go into a room and people that I may not have anything else in common with, we have that bond because we understand what it's like to parent a child with autism. Uh, we know that the teachers understand our children, the therapists understand our children, and everyone's mission is to you know, help these children succeed and reach their potential. And knowing Lisa and Susan's journey in the beginning where they, like, who do we turn to? They didn't have a hope, and they made that hope for us because they traveled this journey. And they said, people need this hope. They need this chance for their son or daughter to, to, to live a typical life. That dream, that spark, has now changed so many people's lives through that walk. And the way they walked, it tells so much about Lisa and Susan's character. Lisa and Susan are absolute angels, real life angels. You know, I mean, they're helping so many people like me, I mean, that were honestly, absolutely lost. I want other kids to have what my kids have. Like, we really have a great life because of Project O. So I just want other people to have that.